I invite you to have a seat. This morning we continue our look through the New Testament, our reading plan, and if you're uh, a member or a regular attender here, you hopefully have joined us in this journey, and we're going into week seven. Uh, and uh, we have a help in your bulletin as uh, just the reading plan and some commentary for it, and it's got our sermon outline in that as well. And so if you look at that, you know that we are going to be talking about calming storms and looking at Jesus' words as he talks to his disciples in the midst of uh, a, a quite literal storm that they are facing. And as we look at this, I want to talk about storms in our life just a little bit. And uh, this might be oversimplifying a little bit, but I, I'm going to categorize them in three different ways. The first is a natural storm, right? So if you're from Fort Wayne and you were here this summer, we had the derechos. Those high winds come through and it may have knocked down trees and you had to deal with those. Um, if you know anyone in Turkey or Syria, you know the earthquake is a, is a devastating thing. Or maybe you've driven through a, a white-out blizzard, white knuckles on the steering wheel trying to find your way when you can't see. These are all natural things that happen. And then we have created storms in our lives where we've done something and we know that we're in the wrong and it has cost us deeply and dearly. Uh, maybe you went in over your head on a bet and actually literally bet the house and lost. Or maybe you put your identity in being a student so much you cheated on the tests and failed the class. Or maybe you thought you were the best at your job only to find out that you were expendable. And so you put all of your trust and all your energy into this one thing that has created problems. The other is force. The things that are forced upon you not because of something you've done, but just by the circumstances you find yourself in. So this might be aging parents who need to perhaps live somewhere different, and you're having to make those decisions. It's not something you decided, but you are in the mix of it. Another forced uh, storm of life can be seen in the example of this broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make. Incredible as it may seem, both the observations of science and the evidence of our eyes lead to the inescapable assumption that those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. The battle which took place tonight at Grover Mills has ended in one of the most startling defeats ever suffered by an army in modern times. Some of you may have been around for that broadcast in 1938, but that is Orson Welles doing a dramatization of the War of the Worlds. And, and people missed that it was a drama that was being read on the radio. And so they thought that there was actually an alien invasion happening. And for those of you who are younger, they didn't have Google to actually check it out to see if it was true or not. So there was, there was some panic that was going on at that time, right? And so in all of these storms of life, they have some things in common. Number one, they conjure up fear, right? So we're afraid of what comes next, and we don't know what to do. They also tend to leave us in this realm of uncertainty. And oftentimes when we're uncertain, we start to uh, go inward, we start to think, woe is me. How can I get out of this? What can I do to make this better? And it's all about us. And I think, I think in that, Jesus has something to say to us, just as he had to say to his disciples. Because the disciples are facing their own storms. They're quite literally straining right? They're straining against the oars to try and move this boat. 
And it'd be easy for the disciples. They're all fishermen. They could have bragged about how strong they were. They, they could have put all of their weight into being uh, able to just row this boat across the lake. But here they are struggling with it. And then we see that they think Jesus is a ghost as he's walking on the water, and they're terrified. These are words that we recognize. These are words that are part of our lives at times. Maybe not right now, but I think we can all have some sense of what it's like. But thankfully, that's not the identity that the disciples had. They, they weren't uh, just men of strength. That's not where they put all of their uh, identity but Jesus, as he comes to them, he reminds them of their identity in him. And he says this, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. These are the same words that have been spoken to God's people for a long time. We see that example in Joshua as Joshua is getting ready to go and, and conquer and take the land. God says, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid, for the Lord your God will go with you. And here we see Jesus saying the same kind of thing to his disciples. Only he says it like this. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. And with that statement, it is I, he, he conjures up uh, this idea from way back in the day. When Jesus says, I am who I am. Or when God says that to Moses, and he's trying to say, how am I going to talk to Pharaoh? And he says, I am who I am. Well, Jesus, he says it like this, ego eimi. That's the Greek there. And quite literally, it's translated as I am or I am he. Right? I am. I'm that guy. I've been here from the beginning. I know you. I've got you. You're okay. Jesus is pointing to a firm foundation, not something that's going to be shaky and rocky in the storms that we face, but something that is solid and there. He points to grace. Don't be afraid. He knows we fear. He knows that the disciples are terrified. Don't be afraid. That's a word of grace. I've got you. Love casts out fear, and you are loved. Take courage. Be encouraged where you're at. You can get that. You got this. You can do it. Be encouraged. And so with these three statements, Jesus refocuses the disciples, not on the storm of life, but on him as the anchor, as the one who brings grace, as the one who brings encouragement and strength into the storm. And so the question is, we know what storms the disciples were facing, but what storms are we facing in life? Maybe if you're like me, you still have fences that are down from the summer storms. Maybe you've created a storm that you don't know how to get out of. Or maybe things have been forced on you that that you are trying to deal with and you don't know how to. In all of this, there's some amount of fear. There's some amount of uncertainty. And so, what can we learn from Jesus? Well, we can learn from his words, ego emi. I, it is I. I am here. Jesus is talking about finding our identity as a child of God. Finding our identity in the waters of baptism. Because in those waters, we know we are loved, we are forgiven, and there is a hope for tomorrow because what he has done for us. He's pointing the disciples and us forward. He's taken all the pain and sorrow and fear on the cross. And we know that. Disciples would come to know that. But as he does that, and as he points this out, and says, it is I, he's saying, come to me. Focus on me. Let me be your anchor. Let me be your identity. A calm in the midst of a storm. He's also saying, you're covered in grace. 
The situation is covered in grace, and you are covered in grace. There is going to be consequences because, yes, we sin. We make mistakes. There are things we do in life that create consequences for us. But at that same time, we're covered in grace, so we know that we are forgiven even as we live those out. And then take courage. You have the strength to get through. He's going to be there with you to get through whatever it is that's happening in your life. So take courage. Find that strength through him and having an identity in him. This is also helpful because we all know people who are going through storms in life as well. And so helping them know that there is a solid foundation, there is a rock that's not going anywhere, that you can, you can place your identity in and know that you're covered in grace. And if you're not up for having that conversation with someone, that's okay. Start with just little words of encouragement. Help them see the small winds through the storm. Because in that, we begin to focus not on what's in front of us, but what's ahead of us. And if we anchor our lives and our identity in Christ, we know that what's ahead of us is something great. Something that cost him his life so that we could have this hope for eternity. And we can see the love and forgiveness that we have that covers each and every one of us. So my hope is that if you're going through a storm, or if you know someone who's going through a storm of life, you can take courage. You can hear the words, it is I, and know that you can find your identity in Christ. And being a child of God, baptized and cleansed in the water, and in that, you don't have to fear. You don't have to fear the uncertainty, but you can know that you are loved and you are forgiven and that there is hope for tomorrow. Amen? Amen. Amen.